All right, Liberty City, this is your talk radio show, Chatterbox, where your opinion matters. Let's go to the phones. Hello, caller, you're on Chatterbox. Hey, you ever had possum? That's some good eating. Nah, I really can't say I have. Well, well, you ought to try it sometime. I tell you, man, it's good eating. Possum, raccoon, even zebra meat cooks up pretty good. Uh, do you have anything else to say, or? Pigeons. Pigeons are good, too. Sometimes they come with notes attached, just like a fortune cookie with wings. Squirrel, squirrels is not so good. They taste like goldfish. Meat's real stringy. You know what I mean? Um, actually, I can't say that I do. Um, but but if I did eat too much squirrel and put on a few extra pounds, I'd use the Dormatron. Unlike those other exercise machines that require you to be awake, the Dormatron actually exercises you overnight. Let's learn a little bit more about it. I've tried everything, and I just couldn't keep those extra 200 pounds off. It started to affect my marriage. She was too big for me. Then I'll sleep with anything. The abdominatrix, the thiazides, the tummy stapling. I've had my mouth sewn up, my hands chopped off. You name it, I've tried it. Yeah, except for exercising and eating right, Porky. That's right, honey. Then I found the Dormatron. Using a new technology called biorhythmic subconscious gymnastics, the Dormatron exercises you while you sleep. Just strap in your arms and legs, put on the Dormatron headset, then wrap yourself in the special high-voltage electric blanket. Turn it on to 11 and burn those pounds away while you have a relaxing night's sleep. Now that I've lost 280 pounds, my husband's all mine again. That's right, honey. No more escort services for me. Don't be fat a day longer than you have to. Remember, being fat can even ruin a romantic cruise. Call Dormatron now at 1-800-SLEEP-OFF-LARD or visit www.sleepofflard.com and sleep your way to a thinner, happier you. I'm a marketing manager who lives in the suburbs and commutes to work on the highway. I live alone, so of course I needed a car that could seat 12 and is equipped to drive across Arctic Tundra. It just makes me feel better. The new Maibatsu Monstrosity. Mine is bigger. Oh, what a, that's a good commercial. I, I love commercials, don't you? This is Chatterbox. We are uh, taking your calls right now. Hello, caller. You are on the air. Hi, Lazlo. Is that your real name? Uh, of course it's my real name. Are you Hungarian? <laughs> uh, no, I'm from upstate. Are you sure that's not a fake radio name like Andy or Bobo? I thought all those radio people had fake names. Do you have a question or you just want to sit here and talk all day about my name? No, that's it. Love the show, Laszlo. Or Mark. Or John. Or Beverly. Whatever your name is. All right, next caller, you're on Chatterbox. What is on your mind? Turnips. Fruit vegetables. You know, albino carrots as they're known back home. Okay, here's the deal. This isn't gardening with Maurice. That's on later. No, he got taken off the air. He lied. I know he did. I've been trying to make a hybrid of a peach and a Pekingese midget fighting bitch for the last two years. And it is impossible. Impossible, I tell you. Okay, and speaking of impossible, Jane from Cedar Grove is on the line, and she wants to talk about how difficult it is being a parent today. Hello, Jane. Hi, Laszlo. I love the show. I'm a first-time caller. I wanted to say something about these video games. They are warping our kids' minds. My son's dog, Bugo, got hit by a truck, and he says, Mommy, Mommy, where's the reset button? Kids these days, they think life is a game. Well, it's not a game, Laszlo. It is very, very serious. I let my kid play video games, and now he runs around the house looking for gold coins. This is teaching our children to go chase money. My little Sam's been playing this new video game called Pogo the Monkey. Yeah, I've heard of that one. His shop teacher called me today, and Sam made a homemade banana cannon in shop class and was lobbing them across the street at a fast food restaurant. And it's all because of video games. Laszlo, life does not have a reset button. Right, but this show does. Ah, I love that button. You know, it's never a dull moment on this show, especially if you're in our key demographic. Love Media. Bringing people and the finest in entertainment together. All right. Hello, next caller. You're on Chatterbox. I want to talk about that Spank stuff. People say it's bad for you. It's not bad for you at all. Why aren't you talking? Oh, you think I'm strange? Am I on the air? Hello? Answer me, you pansy. Uh, what's your question? Spank! 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 <laughs> what about it? I mean, that's not really a question. Questions usually start with words like how and why, and, and they end with your voice going up like this. Don't mock me. I know where you work. You're just like all the rest. How's that? Fluoride right, is evil, dude. And toothpaste, they use it to control us. Why do you think all the commercials tell you to brush it twice a day? <laughs> I've read books. And what book have you been reading that tells you that toothpaste is evil? Dentures, The Devil, and The Great Cavity Cover-Up by J. Phil Higginbottom. If you'd seen what I've seen, and if you've heard what I've heard, you'd never brush your teeth again. 
I suppose you're one of those people that says that diet soda makes you go crazy later in life. I told you before, man. Don't mock me. My taxes pay your salary, you pansy. Yes, sir, uh, this is a commercial radio station owned by Love Media. Advertising revenue pays my salary. And on that note, it's been two full minutes since a commercial. But I'd like to say, if anyone else is stressed, might I recommend Equinox from Zaibatsu Pharmaceuticals. We'll be back after these important messages. Sell out! I used to be concerned and nervous about the future. Sometimes I'd get scared before an important event such as childbirth or family funeral. Hey, sometimes you need a little help navigating life's trouble spots. That's when I discovered Equinox. After the divorce and losing little Tommy, life was getting me down. I couldn't focus on anything at work. After trying Equinox, I've been employee of the month three times in a row. I used to fall unconscious for hours at a time. Now with Equinox, I never need to sleep. Equinox is new from Zybatsu Pharmaceuticals. Ask your doctor about Equinox today. Equinox may cause nausea, loss of sleep, blurred vision, leakage, kidney problems, and breathing irregularities. Do not take Equinox if you're operating heavy machinery, driving a car pregnant, of childbearing age, unhappy, or have a family history of mental disorders. Equinox, softening life's harsh realities. Tonight, the TV event that will make history, Liberty City Survivor. This takes reality TV to a whole new level. We'll take 20 recently paroled guys, equip them with grenade launchers and flamethrowers, and let them hunt each other down. It's the reality show where you just might be part of the action. I was grabbing a sandwich at the Happy Blimp, and all of a sudden these guys crashed through the window and started shooting at each other. I was so excited, I didn't even notice I'd been hit. After that, I was hooked on Liberty City Survivor. I watch it every day in the hospital. The game doesn't end until there's only one man left standing. Tune in nightly or watch the 24-hour live webcast. <laughs> Liberty City Survivor. Natural Selection has come home. Sponsored by Ammunition. All right, we're back on Chatterbox. Call us on the Chatter line to tell us what's on your mind. Line four, you're on Chatterbox. What's on your mind? Liberty City Cox rule! Ah, that's lovely, thanks. Next caller, you're on Chatterbox. That last guy was so full of crap. Everyone knows women are made from sand. Okay, great. Another lunatic. Hello, next caller. You are on Chatterbox. Yeah, you were talking about short guys and attitudes. Well, you know, you'd have an attitude, too, if you couldn't reach the friggin' cheesy swirls at the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it seems like the whole world's against you. I mean... You know, we're not talking about you. What kind of egomaniac are you? You got your own show. How about letting other people talk for a change? You're all the same, you giants. Oh, I'm tall. I'm so important. Listen to me talk about my tall stuff. I think I'll put this on the top shelf. Hey, what's the weather like down there? How's it going, short stuff? Can you get that? You're closer. Why so sad, Pee-wee? Who do you think you are? Short people are people, too. All right, another award-winning show on Chatterbox. Today we're talking about anything, it seems. If you have something to say about anything, call now. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Yeah, I love the show. Love hearing people's opinions. That's what made this country great. People and opinions and stuff. Most of all, guns. I had it with people whining about guns kill people. Guns don't kill people. Death kills people. Ask a doctor. It's a medical fact. You can't die from a bullet. You can die from a cardiac arrest or organ failure or major hemorrhage. Small piece of metal ain't the problem. Besides, I only use my machine gun in the safety of my own home and car. I ain't hurting nobody. And countries that don't have guns ain't American. You, you know, that's a really good point. Countries that don't have guns aren't American. You know, if more people had guns, we'd have less shootings in this country. <laughs> All right, we're going over here to line two. Hello, caller. You are on Chatterbox. Yeah, I'd like to say something about taxes. You mean the Lone Star State? No, taxes. Well, you know, look, taxes are really wrong. My father worked his whole life. He played the lottery. And now the state wants him to pay taxes on the money he wins from that stuff? Buy your own lottery tickets, you know? Hey. Good point. I think that's a lesson to us all. All right. Hello, you are on Chatterbox. Hello, Laszlo. I'm a first-time caller. I recently moved to Liberty City from Hampshire in England. Oh, really? How do you like it? I mean, is it hard to get used to the language? You, you speak English pretty good. Oh, thank you, Laszlo. Yes, yes, I, I do like it here. There's one thing, though, that, that's very different and rather worrying. When I was a boy in England, I had a nanny. She was very strict, Laszlo. Yeah, well, I mean, there's excellent child care here in America, you know. Well, well, I'm sure. But the, but the thing is, Laszlo, when, when, when I was a naughty boy, I, 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 I would get spanked. Na nanny, nanny would spank me when I was naughty. And now, now Freddy needs a nanny, because when Freddy's naughty, he needs to get spanked. Well, there's some child psychologists who probably say that spanking can be harmful to a child's emotional development. Ab ab absolute rot, Laszlo. It's lovely. Freddy needs a nanny. He needs a nanny, Laszlo, because Freddy's been a very naughty boy. H how old is your son? Excuse me? 
How old is your son? I don't have children. I can't stand the little brats. But I'm afraid he needs a nut. All right, that's enough of him. God, who gave this guy a green card? This is Chatterbox. We're talking about short guys, nannies, taxes, and anything sane you'd like to bring to the party. Hello, you are on Chatterbox. I was listening to that caller about taxes. His views are a little extreme. How do you expect to be a responsible member of society if you don't understand how the government spends your money? Why are people afraid of numbers? Sine and cosine are two of the most elegant and incredible discoveries of humanity. I mean, the Cartesian coordinate system has an elemental power I find liberating and even sexy. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Okay, thanks for calling. Now that we've lost 98% of our audience, let's reward the other 2% with a commercial. When we come back, we'll have a special studio guest. Special because he advertises on this radio station. Remember, it's not a conflict of interest if we own all the radio stations in town. We'll be right back after this message. In today's fast-paced world, a split second can be the difference between achieving your dreams... Hey, I just won the Nobel Peace Prize! ...and not. Oh, I wonder if wrestling's on tonight. More Americans are realizing if you don't have the latest and greatest technological devices, you will fall behind. I didn't upgrade my personal organizer, and two days later I was diagnosed with a terminal illness. <laughs> That's exactly why you should come visit the friendly people at House of Tomorrow, and they'll set you up with all your 21st century technology needs. I only spent $20,000, and now I can get email in the shower or surf the internet while I'm driving. I was bored stupid at my daughter's recitals and my son's Little League games. Thanks to House of Tomorrow, I can play wireless head-to-head 3D virtual reality poker literally anywhere. If it's a flash in the pan technology of absolutely no use to anyone, you can find it at House of Tomorrow. Remember, only technology makes life worth living. House of Tomorrow. We'll upgrade your system, then you can upgrade your life. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome Fernando Martinez, who it uh, says here is the founder of Fernando's New Beginnings, a revolutionary new way of saving your marriage. Fernando, welcome. The pleasure is mine, Laszlo. It is an honor to be here. I feel blessed. Ah, thanks. So tell me about Fernando's New Beginnings. Truly, Laszlo, it is a miracle, a blessing. It is a revolution in the marriage guidance. For my people, marriage is, how do you say, sacred. The bond between the father and the mother, it is made in heaven and in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think so. (laughs) For my people, it is the holiest, most sacrosanct thing imaginable, like a church. Yet, for it to be a happy marriage, it must also be like a brothel. The woman, she must be many, many arts, be skilled in making house, cooking, changing the diapers on the babies, and she must also be a whore. A vixen in the bedroom, imaginative, exotic, constantly fresh. It is impossible. You change diapers and then you are a French maid? Fernando thinks not. Fernando knows not. Well, I mean, you know, it's an age-old problem. I mean, how do you keep the excitement in a marriage? Excitement, exactly. Passion, danger. How, Laszlo? How? Tell me how, and I give you a big, big kiss. Like I give a woman. But I am not going to give you a big kiss. Not a kiss like I give a woman or even a donkey. Because, because you do not know. Well, I mean, in this case, ignorance uh, kind of seems like bliss. I, I wasn't really up for kissing on air. I mean, why not, Laszlo? Am I not attractive? Am I not irresistible even to you? Well, no matter. Why all this talking about kissing? I mean, you brought it up. No, my friend. You say you not want to kiss me. I was talking how to say hypothetically to make me all personal. Is a big difference. If I say, imagine if your wife was ugly, you can nod your head. But if I say, hey, Laszlo, your wife, she looked like yesterday's dinner after I eat. You're not so happy. It's a big difference, my friend. Anyway. The marriage is impossible, Laszlo. If a man was born an angel, maybe impossible. But a man is born a man. And a man with knees, he needs a woman to tuck his babies into the bed. But for his bed, he needs something else. Something magical. A dream. Un sueño. So he starts flirting with his secretary, takes her out for a drink. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, he's found all kinds of uses for the office furniture. Exactly, Laszlo. I know what you are like. I see it in your eyes. A wanderer. A dreamer. A man who has knees. But an idiot. And I can save you. And I can save your marriage. (laughs) My marriage doesn't need saving. (laughs) Hey, you are the one mentioning the pretty assisting and the office furniture and the Aikarama, my friend. Listen, Laszlo, and listen very closely. Your marriage is a gift. It's a present from above. But you are a man. I think we see by now you are no angel. 
I can save you. For when the man, he sees wife all fat, all early, with the dirty diapers and the dirty panties and the scrubby brush and who knows what else. He's not thinking of marriage bad. He's thinking about, well, you're thinking about your pretty assistant. We already know that. See? And go on. But Laszlo, what if you act on your fantasy for your little secretary with the short skirt and the pretty eyes and the come here and come there, smile and what then, my friend? What then? Um, I get a sexual harassment suit. If you are lucky, my friend, but you, more likely, your marriage is ruined, Laszlo. Your sweetheart, she hates you. Your pretty secretary, she wants you to be her man. You back it to square one. My friend, you and a thousand men like you. For me, once, it was so. But then one day, I was driving my car, and I realized, Fernando, you are blessed. You are a miracle. A thousand miracles roll into one. You save the marriage, and you save the man. You don't put the marriage first, and you don't put the man first. Maybe we call it man marriage. Then I think to myself, no, this is a bad name. It sounds really dumb. Then I think we call it Fernando's New Beginnings, because that is what it is, a new beginning, Laszlo. So how does this work? It is a miracle, Laszlo, a miracle. A man is a good father, a loving husband, the winner of bread six and a half days a week. On the spare half day, I save his life. How? By giving him what he needs in a controlled environment. I give him passion. <laughs> what, with you? That kind of sounds like a limited market. Last Lloyd, you are very prejudiced. I don't like that. But no, not with me. Passion for life. Passion for love. Passion for women. Which he can take home to his wife, of course. What, so you act like a pimp? Not a pimp, little man. A savior. In a controlled environment, I reintroduce the man to the pleasure he has lost, to the miracles of the world. And truly, the results are remarkable. With my unique counseling, a thousand marriages have been saved, and a million more could be saved every day. <laughs> and, and do the wives know about this? In their hearts, Laszlo, they know they have been saved. Uh... Okay. We're going to open it up to the phones. If you've got any questions for Fernando Martinez, exotic marriage guidance made easy, ring us now. Hey, oh, cool. We have a caller on line one. Caller, you are on Chatterbox. Hi, Laszlo. Hey, Fernando. My name's Jerry, and I'm a first-time caller. And I just wanted to say, hey, Laszlo, you're real tough on Fernando back there. I'll tell you one thing. He's a miracle worker. He saved my marriage, and I married a bus of a woman. Now I don't feel sick every time I open my eyes. See, Laszlo? You see? I remember Jerry so well. He come in, he is like a broken man, like a half a man, a me, if you will. He has no N anymore. And his marriage, it is killing him. Where is the passion? She is gone, replaced by ugliness. You see, Laszlo, Mrs. Jerry, she's not a pretty lady. She's more like an offensive lion or a tight end, big and hairy, but fertile. She gives Jerry five kids. But she's even bigger. Now she's like a whole offensive line. He feels no pride in himself. He has no pride in his marriage. He is ashamed of this wonderful lady who bears him so many young. And he comes to me and he cries, Fernando, save my marriage. I love my wife, even though she is a fat porker. And I say, Jerry, you are a man. It is a man's duty to love his wife, even if she is like a farmhouse. And now Jerry is safe. By sleeping with other women. Whatever it takes to save a beautiful union, a blessing. A beautiful union by a, an adulterer and Queen Kong. <laughs> That's great. So uh, who's on the line now? Hi, Laszlo. This is Janice. I love the show and always wanted to call in, but you really offended me today. Who is this gutter trash you got on the show? Hey, Janice, I share your anxiety. The studio kind of uh, forced him on me. Hey, you watch yourself, mister. And you, Janice, why are you so ugly? Your husband, he not make you happy? No, he's an idiot and a jerk. But he's probably a good daddy, and you sound very pretty. Angry and a little bit of a know-it-all, but very pretty lady. This is the thing, Laszlo. The women they think in new beginnings is only for men. But no, it is for women, too. For Janice, if her husband goes to New Beginning, she thinks Senor Wonderful all over again. And in the extreme case, maybe she come to work for me. And she get a New Beginning herself. She discovered the excitement and the passion all for herself. Listen, Janice, you call me Cinco, 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 Nueve Dos, Nueve Dos. <laughs> now listen, don't try to pimp out my listeners. That is a very early word. 
A travesty. I work miracles, senor. Not pimping. I save. I give the passion back. And you better wash yourself, buddy. Because for my people, we take these initials very personally. And then, you no longer Mr. Talk Show. You Mr. Who Cut Up My Tongue. <laughs> Who are your people anyway? I, uh, which exotic location do you come from? I am... I am Latin. <laughs> Latin is a big place there, buddy. W uh, we're in Latin. I do not need to listen to these insults. I have pride. I have a calling. Many are called, but few are chosen, my friend. And I was called and chosen to work a miracle. So, uh, where were you called from, Fernando? From upstate, okay? Too happy money now? I'm not real Latin, but I provide real Latin passion. I work the miracles every day. Listen, wives, children, if your husband, if your daddy, if he's not happy, send him to me, Fernando. In exchange for a few hours a week, I give you the world. Get off. Get lost. You're just a cheap pimp from upstate. Get out of my studio. I save your daddy. I save your husband. It is a miracle. Get out of here. It's a miracle. Would you like a kitten? Have one delivered. Just log on to PetsOvernight.com and we'll send you a cute kitten overnight. PetsOvernight.com, delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. And now it's time for a public service announcement from station owner Donald Love. Hello, my name is Donald Love. You're listening to a Love Media Station. Enjoy. All right, we're back here on Chatterbox, the radio show that never gets old. I'm Laszlo with open ears and a closed mind. Hello, you're on the air. What's your name? I wanted to talk about spanking. Oh, God, not another one. I think spanking kids is the only way to teach them right from wrong. So you think that teaching kids at an early age that violence is the solution to problems will make them valuable members of our society? Exactly. I knew you'd understand, Laszlo. My daddy used to whoop the tar out of me. He once hit me so hard my spleen fell out of my ear. Didn't do me no harm. Look at me now, I'm the best pest control guy in East Portland. I've killed more rats and roaches and vermin than you can imagine, and I love it. This is such a great country, I wouldn't be where I am today if my daddy had beat me senseless. <laughs> what are you talking about? Man, I'm starting to believe that guy about the fluoride in the drinking water. Listen, if there's any sane person left in Liberty City that can hear my voice, please call the show right now. This is an SOS going out across the city. All right, let's go over to this line. Hello, caller. You are on the air. Are you sane? <laughs> are you a sane caller? Absolutely, Laszlo. Killer bees. K killer bees. Yes, killer bees. Did you know that if the current migration north continues, we will all be dead in three years? Did you want to become a bee supper? I don't. That's why we must act now. Killer bees must be stopped. I wonder why more people aren't talking about this. I mean, killer bees swarming, it sounds pretty serious. Ah, but the killer bees are nothing compared to ants. You can't kill them. They're like sheep. They're going to take over. All right. Thanks, caller. Ants, killer bees, fat people, what's plaguing you? Call now. Chatterbox, hello. You're on the air. Uh, yes. I'd like to say something about these damn people on trains and buses in the city who yammer on and on into their cell phones. I'm really glad we get to hear about what you're having for dinner. What we should do is herd them up and put them on an island. I am the president of a group called Citizens Raging Against Phones. Crap? Exactly. Your organization's called crap. What, what kind of moron are you? You, you want to round people up for using a phone, but you're, you're calling up on a phone to, to tell the world about it. I mean, but how many people are there in this crap? Citizens are raging against phones, Laszlo. How many people? There are three of us. It's hard organizing meetings without the phone, though. We've had to resort to carrier pigeons, and they keep disappearing. What are you speaking to me on? What's, it, what's that in your hand? I am not the problem. You are, and you're perpetuating the downfall of mankind. Liberty City was great before phones ruined everything. Liberty City was a church, a cow pasture, and three houses when the telephone was invented. Liar! You're the liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. What are you? Are you, are you three years old? Laszlo's a liar. Laszlo's a liar. I bet that isn't even your real name. Shut up. You shut up. Stupid. Nanny, nanny, boo-boo, stick your head in doo-doo. Oh, we're going to commercials. Is your job affecting your health? Do you become fatigued? Does working take time away from family and social events like watching wrestling? 
There's an easy solution. Sue your boss. See, the great thing about this country is you can sue anyone for pretty much anything, and you'll probably win, or at least get a settlement. At the firm of Rakin and Ponzer Personal Injury Attorneys, we can show you how falling down and howling like a sissy can result in a large damage award from your employer. We also specialize in awards for injuries suffered in auto, bus, and train accidents, and can even train you to throw yourself in front of a bus and pretend to be injured. Hey, that's why they pay for insurance. Call the law offices of Rakin and Ponzer and get ready to enjoy a life of luxury. All right, we're back on Chatterbox. Let's uh, go to the chatter line here. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Laszlo, I just wanted to make your viewers aware that... Okay, now, this is a radio show. We don't have viewers. We have listeners. Uh, okay. Anyway, Laszlo, I just wanted to make your viewers aware the first international puppetry festival is next month at the fairgrounds, bro. If you're interested in becoming a puppet master or a ventriloquist, you should definitely come down, dude. It's going to be totally killer. <laughs> I wasn't aware that there was much demand for puppet shows these days. I mean... Oh, man. Have you been living under a rock, bro? Guys with puppets get chicks. I take my monkey puppet to the park all the time. We play hacky sack together. It's rad. But anyway, dude, at the International Puppetry Festival, we'll be having workshops on finger puppets, too. Hello, Petunia the Pinky. Meet Barry the Thumb. String puppets, glove puppets. Dude, it's gonna rock. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hope to see you there, Laszlo. Hey, by the way, can you give me that guy Fernando's number? Nah, I'm sorry. Fernando hasn't paid his bill to our ad sales department. But here's someone who has. And they paid us in stacks of old groats and gold guineas. We'll be back after this. Do you live in the boring suburbs but dream of living in a lonely castle on a windswept moor? Do you long to trade in your sweatsuit for a hundred pound suit of armor and swap your SUV for a noble stallion? Do you eat microwave dinners all the while wishing you were roasting a suckling pig at a pagan banquet? Is your next ideal home improvement a moat? Well, get ready, Liberty City! <laughs> This weekend and every weekend at Liberty City Park, it's the Medieval Millennium Fair. Our band of traveling minstrels, knights, and maidens oh so fair are ready to delight you with tales of the Black Death, witch burnings, and the joys of being a feudal serf. Forget about air conditioning and modern medicine. We've got all the leeches, spells, and potions you need at the Medieval Millennium Fair. Learn the art of cooking with turnips. Yum, yum. Buy genuine reproduction medieval artifacts including maces, double-handed battle swords, and one-size-fits-all chainmail. And this weekend only, pick up an authentic mechanical Lady of the Lake in Excalibur. It's perfect for your garden pond or a swimming pool. And learn how to rid your condo of vermin using a penny whistle and a mysterious prancing German named Hans. The Medieval Millennium Fair, every weekend at Liberty City Park. <laughs> All right, Liberty City, you are listening to Chatterbox, the show that is the number one reason for the success of the Internet. All right, let's take a call. Who's on the line? Clothes. W what about them? Clothes. What are you talking about? Laszlo, clothes. Clothes, Laszlo. I hate them. I just hate them. <laughs> I mean, we're all, we're all about opinions on Chatterbox, which is uh, Liberty City's premier phone-in station, but why don't you like clothes? I just hate them. They're so constricting. I mean, there's a line where clothes, and the line is the king of the jungle. So why can't I, a humble citizen, go naked? Well, I mean, I guess a line has two distinct advantages over you. One, I mean, it's as you say, a king, and therefore it can exercise its royal prerogative to not wear clothes. And two, it's a cat, and therefore it doesn't have to. And three, I mean, now that I think about it, if you want to try to dress a lion, you can, but... I guess what we're learning is that life can be a little unfair at times. I'm naked, Laszlo. I'm naked. I, you know, I really didn't need to know that. Why, Laszlo? Why? Does it offend you? I was born naked, and I'm going to die naked. I'm going to live naked. So there, and there's nothing wrong with being naked. It's so invigorating feeling the hot leather of a chair or the cool wind from the north on your naked body. I, I, I'm going to have to cut you off. Don't you believe in free speech and free expression? No, of course you don't. All you believe in is free drinks. I'm naked and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. I'm naked and I feel so good. Well, what about winter? What do you mean? You know, I mean, what about winter? When the wind blows and it's really cold, I mean, do you prance about like a ninny waiting for your privates to go blue? I was born naked and I'm gonna die naked. <laughs> and all shriveled up by the sound of things. Winter was invented by clothing companies. Clothes are unnecessary. They're ugly. Have you ever cooked in the nude? No, look, is this leading anywhere? Because, I mean, we've got a lot of other people waiting to talk about real things here. Nudity is real. Open your eyes. Take off your pants. Come on. Come on, Laszlo. You can be a figurehead for Liberty City Naturists. 
We have more members now for the first time since 1977. Nudity is back. A lot of people are into nudity and really understand the spiritual side. What? Of hanging out with loads of naked chicks? I mean, I see the fun in it, but I just think clothes have distinct advantages, like like not accidentally cooking yourself or, or when you're working on a building. We're not swingers. It's not about sex. It's about being one with the world. All right, dude. Groovy. Hug a rainbow. It's time for a public service announcement from Donald Love. Hello, I'm Donald Love. Under my guidance, Love Media has emerged as the fastest-growing U.S.-run media conglomerate of the past five years. With newspapers, television, and radio stations across the U.S. and the free world, alongside a wide array of industrial and technology interests, we at Love Media ensure you get the truth behind the story every time. From films to dog food, from radio to pop music, you can be sure of independent, quality-led broadcasting every time you tune in. That's why we're the fastest-growing cable supplier and health insurance provider in the Northeast, and why our new satellite in China is something all Americans can be proud of. Here at Love Media, we are proud of what we have done to help America and to help hard-working Americans relax. For investment opportunities or information about our new interactive television service, please go to www.lovemedia.tv. Ooh, that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. All right, let's go to line eight. Hello, caller. What's your name? Bob. Bob from Pine Creek. Hey, uh, what's up, Bob from Pine Creek? Well, I've been listening to your show, and there's always people going on about problems in schools. Guns, people showing disrespect to teachers, drugs. Schools are breeding grounds for crime, ain't they? Well, I guess it seems that way. Well, I got a real simple solution. Shut them down. Shut down the schools, and you shut down the problem. No more dead teachers, no more angry students. Well, but you don't think... No, I don't. Never. Now listen to me. It makes perfect sense. Kids these days, they complain a lot, but you know what? It costs even more. I mean, shoes, books, toys, even special tiny furniture, pets, that sort of crap. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. Well, not my Johnny. No, sir. Uh Uh-uh. I'm learning him the value of good, hard work. Learning him good. At three, we taught him how to clean the bathroom. If you left so much as one hair on the soap, it was off to bed with no dinner. And you know what? He went to bed hungry only 20, maybe 30 times. He learned. Now, he brings his mother lunch in bed every day so she can sleep in. Let me tell you, everyone should have their kids serving up food. He even cooks for the whole family. These days, he's getting too big to sweep chimneys, so now he's a paralegal at Rakin and Ponzer. He's seven, and he's making Imagine Me 23000 a year. And on weekends, he doesn't go to the mall, play soccer, read, or do any of that kind of stuff. No, no, he works in the basement of a marketing company making photocopies all night. Hell, he'd go to sleep during the day, but that's another eight grand right there. So now, I'm buying me a bass boat and trailer. What do you say to that? Well, it sounds kind of like exploitation to me. Exploitation? Man, you bleeding hearts kill me. Johnny's mine. He's my kid. How can I exploit something I own? Exploitation. You sound like a communist. Kids in Russia, they don't work. That's why everything's so messed up over there. You have to wait in line for toilet paper. And their space station, it was made out of milk crates. I'll tell you, working for a living is the American way. That, and the only thing more American is having folks work for you. That sounds a little oppressive and even despotic. Exactly, Laszlo. You hit the nail on the head that time. He's my kid. I'm telling you, just shut the schools down, make the kids work. That book stuff's all for sissies anyway. And doctors and politicians, lawyers, and whatever. You know, I can't be bothered to argue with you, but I do feel sorry for your little Johnny, the seven-year-old cook, chimney sweep, paralegal photocopier, because his daddy's an idiot. Let's take a quick break. Phil and I just had another kid, so of course we need a bigger SUV. Being a mom is hard with soccer, football, and lacrosse practice, so we bought the new Maibatsu Monstrosity. It's so big, we lost little Joey in the back and couldn't find him for an hour. When I'm rushing to the mall or talking on my cell phone, I know me and my family are safe. The Maibatsu Monstrosity has four-wheel drive, and in amphibious mode, it can cross rivers. So far, I've only hit a few puddles, but it's good to know it's there. With the time I save taking shortcuts through the strip mall parking lot, I can focus on the important things, like gazing longingly at the pool boy or buying more exercise equipment off the TV. So what if it gets three miles to the gallon? I'm a mom, not a conservationist. The new Maibatsu Monstrosity. Mine is bigger. Would you like a giraffe? Have one delivered. Just log on to PetsOvernight.com and we'll send you a giraffe overnight. PetsOvernight.com, delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. 
All right, you are listening to Chatterbox, hosted by me, Laszlo, because I got kicked off the rock station. Let's go over here and talk to somebody about their life. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hi, Leslie. My name's Martha. I just love your show. I always listen to you when I'm getting my colon irrigated. I just wanted to say something about the Internet, you know, the information superhighway, the World Wide Web. Yeah, I know all about it. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I mean, it's just incredible. I know a lot of people say it's absolutely a load of crap, but how could they be so dumb? It's remarkable, I think. Think of all the things you can do. I mean, suppose you want to buy a new CD. What do you do, Leslie? I go to a shop, and the name's Laszlo. I know, Leslie. I'm a regular listener. Well, I don't. I buy a CD online, and then I rip the music into a different format so I can listen to it while I'm jogging. I mean, it's incredible. I also like chess and cooking and bestiality, so the internet is really good for my hobbies. I think it's amazing. I used to go out a lot, but I don't have to go out ever again. It's incredible. I don't envy those kids with their stock options or their fast cars. They earn them. The internet has saved my life. This is really going nowhere. Do you have anything interesting to say at all? Well, um, well, I once crocheted the Declaration of Independence. That's phenomenal. It's probably one of the reasons there are so many single men in this city. All right, let's go over to here to line 79. Hello, you're on Chatterbox. Hello, uh, is that Laszlo? Uh, yes. <gasps> oh, wow, I'm on the radio. How exciting. Oh, thank you, Laszlo. Um, is this on the radio? I mean, am, am I actually on the radio right this second? Uh, uh, yes, you are. Uh, I'm sure it's very exciting for you, but uh, what do you want to talk about? <gasps> oh, man, I mean, what, what, what else is there? I could go on all day, but well, you know how it is, don't you, Laszlo? Uh, not really. I mean, what's your name? What did you call about? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm Maria, you know, Maria, like Mamma Mia, only, only different, you know, but, you know, men, M-E-N, <laughs> oh, it's a dirty word, Only there's only three letters, uh, you, you know what I mean? I mean, your broadcasters are all the same, aren't you? I mean, I heard about you, you're always out on boys' nights. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what are you talking about? I, I, I'm married. Uh, one of those convenience jobs to protect you, I bet? <laughs> I know what you're all like. You know more about men than I know about leopard skin furniture. So, less of that clever stuff, and give me some advice. I mean, come on, I got real problems. You see, okay, I had this boyfriend, and at first, he was real kind to me. He was a real gentleman, a little bit older and everything, but, you know, he treated me really good. And then it all went wrong, and so, you know, I found someone else, and he seems real nice, but, you know, he don't talk too much, so I really can't tell if he likes me, and... Well, I guess what I want to know is, you know, how do you tell if a guy is serious? I mean... You know, he treats me good, but he don't seem real interested in me. You know, he's always working and hanging out with the guys. Um, say, you don't think he's like you, do you? What do you mean, like me? Well, what are you insinuating? Th that he's on the radio? Well, probably not. Um, y you're listening to Chatterbox, where your opinion matters, or at least we say that. Let's go over here to line four. Hello, caller, what's your name? Jeff from Rockford. Hello, Jeff, what's up? I wanted to tell you and your listeners about a once-in-a-lifetime chance to make a difference. There's a rally tomorrow evening at the park, starting at 7. Although we'll be painting banners and singing songs all night and all day to prepare for it. Then, when tens of thousands have gathered in the park, we're going to march on the town hall. Laszlo, the people have spoken, and they have said no, not in my town. So folks, if you're listening and want to make a difference, get yourselves down to the park and prepare to bring democracy back to the people. So, uh, what's this rally about, Jeff? It's about people standing up and being counted. It's about the future. It's about telling those morons in the suits, no thanks, not in my town. Not while I have a breath in my body and hope in my soul. I will not, I cannot let this pass. L let what pass? It's about grabbing the town by the balls and saying, listen, son, time to put up or shut up. No more you know, Mr. Nice Guy. No more easy solutions to difficult problems. It's about what it means to be an American. It's about giving something back. Giving what back, Jeff? Hope. Dreams. Belief. Belief in what? I mean, look, Jeff, I, I admire your passion. Really, I do. But what will people be marching for? What, what's your rally about? It's about justice, Mr. Lowe. A chance to shine and make a difference. About thousands of people walking side by side as brother marches. Only one thing on their minds. The chance to make a difference. Bring your friends. Nothing shows a man how much you mean to him more than the chance to walk together for justice. Bring your kids. They can paint signs and we'll even have a face painter and a vegan barbecue. Bring your parents. Dude, even the elderly care about tomorrow. I understand that. It sounds like a great rally, but we're not a political station, and you haven't really told us why people should do this. What is it about? Look, look, do you want to help or not? I don't know what I'm helping. You're helping America. What kind of patriot are you? There's a rally. You don't know what it's for, do you? It's for hope. Please come, everybody.
It'll be real good. All right. You fight the power, brother. Say, later on in the show, if you're into uh, health foods or martial arts, we'll have a special guest just for you. This guy's really special. Kind of like a romantic cruise, but he can't walk on water. All right, let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Huh? <laughs> you're on Chatterbox. What's on your mind? Oh, wow. I can't believe it. <laughs> Do you have a question? Dude, I call every day and I never get through. This is amazing. You do a great show, man. <laughs> Thanks. What's uh, what, 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 what's up? No, man, I'm serious. Really great. You're like a total inspiration. <laughs> and exactly what have I inspired you about? Well, okay, right now I live at home, but pretty soon, like next week, dude, I'm moving out. It's uh, the big 4-0 and it's, it's, it's just time to go. Okay. Did you have anything relevant to say? Yeah, dude, that B dude was Bogus. Really bogus. That's all. Great show, Laszlo. I, I appreciate that. You know, that's why I went to broadcasting school. All right, when we come back from these messages that help supplement my meager salary, we're going to talk to Reed Tucker. It's going to be a great interview. We'll be right back. A good shoe starts from the ground up. At Aris, we make high-quality footwear. In fact, you can find Aris running shoes in over 140 countries around the world. In the past, there's been some criticism about our workers. That's why I'm here at one of the Aris factories so you can meet some of them. Excuse me, sir. Do you enjoy your job here? It's fun. We get to play with knives. <laughs> I see. Is there a real sense of teamwork? My friend Joey sewed his hands together. Wow. You're learning some real skills. How about the salary and benefits? Yesterday. I made a dollar. See, that's the kind of dedication we have to our employees and the quality of our shoes. Eris Running Shoes. Always running from something. Buying a gift for the guy that has everything? Log on to PetsOvernight.com. We've got exotic pets galore, including tigers, cobras, manatees, and white rhinos. All delivered overnight. PetsOvernight.com, delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. All right, now joining us in the studio, we have a very special guest. His new book, Karate and Digestion, has been on the top 100 self-help books for the past three weeks. He is the founder of Now and Zen, Dojo and Organic Food Market in Trenton. His name is Reed Tucker. Welcome to Chatterbox, Reed. Why, thank you, Laszlo. It certainly is an honor to be here today. So tell me, Reed, where did you think of the idea of combining martial arts and organic food? I mean, I mean, it's kind of like putting ice cream on pizza. Both are great, but they really shouldn't be put together. Okay, Laszlo. Actually, it is nothing like ice cream with pizza. Ice cream is milk-based, as we all know, and I am lactose intolerant. And pizza, as you may know as well, is a sandwich derivative of Italian origins, but I won't go on. Martial arts are about discipline and physical empowerment, not watching football and eating junk food. You have to Explore your mind and your digestive system, Laszlo. What you put in also comes out. <laughs> Especially corn. What's the story with that anyway? Laszlo, I'm deadly serious now. My mentor was a 430-year-old monk who showed me the way to enlightenment through carrot juice. Okay. If you have a question for Reed, we'll be taking calls in a little bit. I think we all went through a ninja period. You know, I had the Chinese stars and the nunchucks. This is not a period, Laszlo. This is a way of life. Thanks to a strict vegan diet, I had the power of nine men. After morning meditation and a three-bean salad, I could chop a bus in half. Sometimes I even frighten myself. <laughs> no offense, but you're kind of a scrawny, pasty dude. It, and it says on the inside cover of your book that you still live in your parents' basement. Okay, it, it's not a basement. I prefer a center for spiritual enlightenment. In chapter 17 of my book, which I know you have read, I address the dangers of cynicism. Ladlow, a closed mind is like a closed fist, and karate means open hand. But it might as well mean open mind. If you like wheatgrass, I think you'll really like my book. Well, I'm not a masticating cow, so I really don't enjoy chewing damp hay and prancing around in leggings, shouting, Hiya! Okay, that though, I'm warning you this time, do not make me angry. It's bad for my karma, and it will definitely be bad for your karma. I study the martial arts so I could stand up to bullies just like you, and I encourage everyone listening out there on Chatterbox to buy my book and learn how organic food and martial arts can help you too. <laughs> and I encourage anyone who needs a doorstop or booster seat to buy it as well. Let's see who's on the phones. Laszlo, this is your final warning. Do not make me go into my dragon's dance. <laughs> Hello, caller. You are on the air. Hello, Reed. I bought your book. It really saved my life. Why, thank you. I wanted to ask about Chapter 29, Yoga, Not Yogurt. I just can't give up cheese. It's so wonderful. I've rejected chocolate milk and cat's butter out of my life. I've scooted around the house with my legs in behind my head for two days now. But my husband says I look like the chick in The Exorcist. 
I even put all the dairy on the top shelf of the fridge so I couldn't reach it with my legs in behind my head and all. But I grow weak and start knocking things down with a broom. What can I do, Reed? Do not fret, my child. We are all weak. <laughs> you certainly are. Fed up, you carnivore. Why don't you go gnaw on a bone like a gorilla, lad, though? Our ancestors didn't eat chicken wings. They lived at one with nature and their ecosystem, subsisting on a diet of nuts, berries, and leafy vegetables. Yes, and they threw stones at their own shadow and died of old age and fear at 24. Laszlo, the soul is eternal. But let me answer the question. When I'm in trouble or tempted by those all-you-can-eat breakfast buffets with huge pans of juicy bacon... Can we get some bacon in here? <sighs> Laszlo, I go back to basics. I start the day with a fruity beverage, some meditation, and six hours of yoga. The next, I go open up my shop, now and then, and drink two pints of hand-pressed potato juice. And who wants a steak after that? Okay, next caller, you are on Chatterbox with Reed Tucker. Yo, Reed... Kung Fu movies are dope. How can I learn to beat up ten guys at once? Okay, first things first, my man. You need to stop the negative thinking. And the best attack I've found is to just run away. That way you instill fear in your opponent. They never know when you might descend from the rafters like a bat. I don't want to hear about no tofu running away. I want to learn about being a ninja and kicking people's asses. Actually, I do cover this early on in the book in chapter 45. It's called Stir Fry Your Prejudice. You see, I once thought like you before my master took me under his wing and taught me the joys of soy and origami. Concentration begins in the mind and spreads to all the extremities of the body. You must use the language of the body, not the tongue. And the language of the body begins with raw, uncooked, organic vegetables. Just look at me. I could tear a phone book in half with my bare toes. In fact, Laszlo, I could easily chop this desk in two half desks. This desk is made of two-inch thick composite wood pulp and has a mahogany veneer finish. It has three drawers, and knowing this station, it costs $100. In his own words, Reed Tucker is about to smash it into two half desks. Take it away, Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, I already visualized the desk in two half desks, and now I shall make it so. Dragon stance. Hey, yeah! Oh! Oh, oh Lalo! Lalo, I think I hurt my hand. My, my pinky's all bent the wrong way. Listen, Karate Kid, the desk is still in one piece. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay, Lalo, mockery will get you nowhere. I think I'm going to hit you now. Oh, I breathe easily. Don't throw any tofu or bean curds at me. Okay, very funny, Lalo. It's easy to make fun of me, but it's all the fault of the feng shui in here. It's downright disgraceful. Yes, it makes you talk like this. Okay, the listener lines are open. This is Chatterbox. You're on the air. Hey, Lalo. That last guy was a lunatic. Where'd you dig him up from? The state loony bin? And that wacko you had going on about killer bees? What a moron. I mean, just read a newspaper. Killer bees, uh, the evils of artificial sweeteners and soda pop, Roswell, it's all part of the government's propaganda plan. I might as well wear a satellite dish so they can beam their propaganda right into my brain. Come on, do you honestly believe the NSA's echelon system isn't already reading your emails and recording your phone conversations? It's all designed to frighten us so we don't complain about our rights being taken away in the name of fighting whatever boogeyman they come up with today. Uh, well, I mean, you realize that the government listens to this station, and, and if they weren't paying particular attention to you before, they're probably going to be following you now. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, they already got me once, but never again. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? Yeah. Free Kevin! All right, we're talking about short guys, killer bees, the Magna Carta, chill... Uh, well, the red light on the wall is flashing, which means that the owner of the station has an important announcement to make. Let's go live to his office. Hello, my name is Donald Love. You're listening to a Love Media Station. Enjoy. Wow, man, that was deep. You know, I really like working here. This station, it feels like my second family. <laughs> Except that we have a snack machine. And I tell you, working here beats the hell out of digging sewage ditches outside Kuala Lumpur. All right, let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Last little man, I, I was listening to that English wimp you were talking to earlier. I mean, do these guys realize how wussy they sound? I mean, they, they have the nerve to call crackers biscuits. And they say aluminium instead of aluminum. I mean, what's up with that? They all think they sound so smart with the little funny accents. I mean, I got something for them. Speak English, you limey morons. Well, you know, I think they were speaking English before we were. Uh, the people over here were speaking Shoshone and Cherokee. Man, Cherokee Cherokee, man. And, and another thing, what's up with them calling soccer football? Man, you, you ever watch soccer? Man, that's a boring game, man. I'll tell you what soccer is. Soccer's for little girls, man. Football, now that's an American sport. It, it teaches you good.
good, wholesome American values, man, like like stealing other people's land by force and, and wearing tight pants while you do it. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about being a man, Laszlo. Something you wouldn't know anything about from the sound of things. I'll tell you, I bet you played wimpy stuff like, like touch football and, and, and basketball. Look, I'm running around the court bouncing the ball and I'm seven foot three. I'm telling you, man, I only play men sports like football and hopscotch. Hopscotch? That's a girl's game. Man, that ain't a girl's game, man. Not rugby hopscotch. Man, get me in a scrum and I'm dangerous. I'll take anybody down. I'm the hopscotch master. I got fly skills and hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of see your point, but, you know, you'd be a little cranky, too, if your empire had fallen apart over the last hundred years. And speaking of commerce, it's time for some commerce here. Let's go to commercials. We'll be back after this. Has your marriage gone stale? Has the spark gone out of your love life? Looking to add a little adventure to the monotony of monogamy? Hello, I am Fernando Martinez, founder of Fernando's New Beginnings, a revolutionary new way of saving your marriage. We understand how two kids and a mortgage can take the passion out of your life. With our three-step program, you'll rediscover romance guaranteed. Hi, my name's Phil. I've got three kids, two cars, and a mortgage. My love life was going stale, even before my wife's car accident. Then I called New Beginnings. Thanks to Fernando, I'm still married. But on Wednesday afternoons, I meet Barbara at the motel by the turnpike. See? The passion she's back. Phil's marriage is saved, and his kids will have a daddy to look up to. Call New Beginnings today. Cinco, 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 nueve dos, nueve dos. It will be a miracle. I guarantee it. Fernando's New Beginnings. We turn an ending into a new beginning. Mom, there's a package for you. But I didn't order anything. What's this? How sweet. <laughs> Gee willikers, it's a puppy. Everybody loves a puppy. And now you can ship one anywhere just by logging on to PetsOvernight.com. PetsOvernight.com. Delivering little bundles of love in a box directly to your door. <laughs> And who says that e-commerce isn't a brilliant idea? All right, speaking of brilliant, you're listening to Chatterbox with me, Laszlo. Let's go over here to the phones and see what's plaguing Liberty City. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Wow, I got through. Uh, Laszlo, I think your last few callers are a perfect example of manners in this city. People are rude, and they don't seem to care about anything but themselves. Perfect example. The other day, I stopped at the store to pick up an exercise bar because I hadn't had breakfast or lunch. So I go up to pay, and the lady's like, $1.25, please. So I get out my checkbook, and the guy behind me is like, oh, come on, lady, you don't have $2? And I said, as a matter of fact, I don't. I spent my last $2 last night buying gas at these ridiculous gas prices. And besides, who are you anyway? Can't you see that I'm wearing my I Walked for the Cure t-shirt? People are so so inconsiderate. Well, you'll get no argument from me. I mean, I get every inconsiderate moron in Liberty City calling into this show. I mean, people think that I have no feelings whatsoever. Exactly. A another perfect example. The other day, I'm over at the hospital to have lunch with my girlfriend, Sharice, and this maniac comes right up on my bumper, flashing his lights, and I'm like, hey, guy, the light is red. You can't just come up behind me honking and flashing your lights. Then he gets over this megaphone and says to the woman in the teal my Batsu monstrosity, please move to the side. Can you believe it? I mean, who has a megaphone rigged into their car? People are so obnoxious these days and rude. I mean, I tell my nanny to teach my kids some manners. You know, I think that's a lesson to us all. All right, hello, next caller. You're on Chatterbox. Hello, Laszlo. Ugh. Did that woman say she was a nanny? Because Freddie needs a nanny because he's been a very naughty boy. No, no nannies. Let's go to our next caller. All right. Colonel James T., United States Marine Corps, 2nd Battalion. Laszlo, that caller made a really valid point. These kids today have no respect for authority. And there is one thing that would whip them into shape. <laughs> Let me guess. The, the military. That's right. The military teaches you respect, obedience, and it gives you a good pension. These kids that thought they were going to be millionaires, look where the super information highway has gotten them. Nowhere. It's a dead end. Uncle Sam takes care of his boys. And some girls. If more people would join the military, this would be a better country. And I tell you another thing about respect. These kids don't respect veterans. We fought for your freedom. 
when I came back from the Australian-American War. I didn't get a hero's welcome. I didn't get a pat on the back from my friends and neighbors saying, thanks for fighting for our freedom, James. After years of fighting in the trenches, I come back here and everyone's watching TV. Now, can you tell me what this Australian-American War was? I mean, I really never heard of it. God, not another one. Have you read a history book lately, son? The Australian-American War was the biggest war since the big one. I tell you, I didn't do two tours and take boomerang shrapnel in my head so I could come back here and have a bunch of hippies deny history. Those Aussies are ruthless. They even wired kangaroos with explosives. Come hopping into camp. Knock out ten guys. Well, thanks for the history lesson. All right, let's go over here. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Yeah? Is that Laszlo? Yes, it is. Who's this? My name ain't important. It's real unimportant, okay? Uh, no, not really. I mean, this is a radio show. People usually tell us their name. My name is real unimportant. And you want to keep being a wise guy, you'll find out just how unimportant. Like, unimportant, I just got shot in the head, unimportant? Do I make myself clear? Uh, yes. Uh, why are you calling in today? Because I need some advice. And I ain't doing any of that shrink shit. Uh, if you swear again, we're gonna have to cut you off. This is a family show. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just a little unhappy, a bit agitated. Real angry. It's my ma. She don't think I'm a real man. Can you imagine that? I mean, I do a man's job and all, but... She treats me like a little boy. All I get is, your pa this and your pa that and you ain't a real man, Tony, and it's driving me freaking nuts. Well, Tony... Tony? How'd you know my name was Tony? You're tracing this call? Because if you are, you're going to get real intimately acquainted with what your brains look like. My name ain't Tony, okay? Uh, okay. But my mom, she keeps going, Tony, Tony, be a real man. Stand up for yourself. Don't take no shit. But all I do is to be a good son. And I want her to show that she cares for me. Show that she loves me. And, you know, say I was a good kid. But it seems like nothing's ever good enough for her. You know what I mean? What do I do? Well, Toad, I mean, sir, you know, in life we have a lot of obligations. And we just kind of have to face up to them. And right now, I'm obligated to play some commercial announcements. We'll be back right after this. We've got a new friend for everyone. He's got fur and a tail. He gets in lots of trouble, but he's a bouncy little fellow. Because he's got springs for legs. Pogo the Monkey, the best new video game for the whole family. I love you, Pogo. You bounce. Help Pogo escape from the evil research laboratory where the mean old scientist genetically altered him. Uh-oh, the pharmaceutical scientist is going to get you, Pogo. Here you go, Pogo. Have a gold coin. Good thing Pogo has a banana cannon. Those nasty scientists deserve to die. Now get the shampoo manufacturers before they squirt it in your eye. Here you go, Pogo. Have a diamond. You'll guide Pogo through tons of fun adventures, including saving Timmy, who fell down the well. Help! <laughs> Here you go, Pogo. Have a big watch. Rescue a cat out of that tree with your banana cannon, Pogo. Here you go, Pogo. Have a fast car. And help Pogo to his final mission, to storm the White House with his friends and become President of the United States. <laughs> Pogo the Monkey is the game kids are sure to stare at for hours. Everyone loves Pogo. Idiot Gamer called Pogo the best spring and simian game since bouncing bananas. Buy the game Pogo the Monkey today. Right, Pogo? And coming soon, Pogo the Monkey card game, Pogo the Monkey plastic dolls, Pogo the Monkey quilt covers, and Pogo the Monkey car covers. For the dad who has everything, why not a Pogo the Monkey tie-in sports jacket? For the lady in your life, why not Pogo the Monkey chocolates and hygiene products so she smells like a real monkey? And for kids, a life-size, living, breathing, springing monkey. All available at PogoTheMonkey.com. Nuts. Well, Tony... Tony? How'd you know my name was Tony? You're tracing this call? Because if you are, you're going to get real intimately acquainted with what your brains look like. My name ain't Tony, okay? Nobody, I mean nobody, messes with Tony Cipriani. 